Hello, welcome back to my channel. Uh, thanks for visiting my profile. So today we will be looking at the watch trailer scene. Some folks requested to take a look at the post processing that I'm using and how I'm using it. So I'm planning also to show about this. But let's take a look first at the watch trailer scene and what it's happening here. So uh, what we have is happening like for those annotations. What I'm doing this time, instead of use the annotation HTML, which is the, it was the thing that I've been using so far. This time I decided to just place a mesh inside the, the spaceship uh, uh, object. So if you take a look here with me, like in scene one, we have this space station and then we have this component here annotation which is inside the mesh and all this annotation component is doing is basically showing like meshes so i'm creating a map from those annotations here uh, so i created an array with positions and names and all of those i run through all of them and then i map a mesh for every single one of them and then I set the parameters for click and hover and what they what they need to do and that's why they behave like a annotation they were there and they trigger the event to show the basically the overlay a top tooltip uh, thing the way I'm doing this I'm using Vautio which is like one of my favorite things on React Tree Fiber in React environment, to be honest, because Vautil works with anything related to React. So you basically, what I'm doing, I'm setting like this, the global state of the click at pin to be the annotation index. Instead of dealing with indexes, I'm, I'm being kind of simplistic, I would say here. So I'm just setting the name of the annotation and then I set uh, when I click I set the hover pinned to be null again and when I hover I have like this internal state which is here uh, the hover index and the set hover index so when I hover I use this to internally change the cursor using the hook that is inside react for the use cursor and that is like just changing the cursor to be honest and then when I click I set this global state annotation to be the name of the the thing and then if you look at here it is ugly I know like could be more optimized but it's simple like it is a simple project so I'm basically checking if the current scene it is the one that I clicked and I have some of them so the inside scene it is looking at the current scene and it is not looking at directly the name of the, the, the annotation because I'm doing a camera animation. And this one is a little bit tricky. I plan to have another section to explain how this component works. But very briefly, let me show you how we can get like uh, inside that scene. So it is this one here. So I have a GSAP hook here and animation which do like many different things I will show you uh, later but then on start I set the scene to fade out which is making everything dark and on complete I set the current scene to be inside this way we don't see the the transition so we see this transition to black then I change the component and then I make everything again brighter and that's the way I'm doing it. So we cannot notice the transition between those two scenes. And yeah, that's it. And for this component here, there are some like interesting things that are happening here. So the scene two, which is this one here, as you can see, it is really, really simple. So all that I'm doing here, I'm using like basically all of the dry's default components. So I have the clouds component here that I'm using for those fog effects. And again, 
lazy but it works if you set the lights correctly it works then i have a directional light which is different from the one that i'm using outside because they are different scenes so i'm using two sets of lights one for the spaceship and another one for this internal one and because they never render at the same time we don't have a performance problem uh, then we have the environment and I would say the magic happens like in this environment component because it looks like this is a, like a real mesh it looks like a real mesh but let me turn off some of the things we have here so for example if I remove the environment and I hopefully this will not crash yeah as you can see everything is black so that environment it is creating all of the mesh like and this is happening because of this ground property so if I remove the ground the camera will be floating into the air which is not what I wanted maybe in your case is what you want but this in my, like in my case this is not what I wanted I wanted the camera to be very low angle and to be able to look at the screen with the reflection on the floor which is another mesh by the way so the ground uh, property it is the one thing that it's enabling me to achieve what I want. So, for example, if I change the height here to be, let's say, 8 or maybe, let's say, 20. As you can see, we can go higher and higher. Let's say 90. Yeah, see how it changes. So uh, what I'm doing, I'm just playing with the numbers until I get what I want. And then you can play with the scale of this mesh. You can make it like really, really wider, like and be distorted like a sphere. Uh, but yeah, like this is a great component. This is a great thing to use and it is very powerful. And then the reflection on the floor. And I'm, again, most people don't know about this one. You can make reflexive components uh, transparent. So in this case, if I, for example, set the opacity to be one here, uh, and then I will set the mirror to be zero, meaning that we don't see any more the, re the uh, let me change the color as well. Color, let's set this to be gray. So we can look what it's happening here so my my the light of my color is orange that's why it's everything it is a little bit let me change this one also to be gray yeah so what we have here like is a rent reflexive floor and because i'm using the ground we can see through the reflector so we can have both of the best words so we have the mirror effect on the floor and we have the floor from the ground environment and that's why you can achieve this kind of result and then uh, other than that it's basically like the perspective camera and the orbit controls they are pretty much basic uh, and another thing that is interesting it is how i'm handling the 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 video player as well so this is inside the camera model which is another component and here what i'm doing I'm basically rendering like a circle inside of the mesh that I, that I already have. So this is an important, an imported model from Blender that I grabbed from Sketchfab, I guess. I, I will have all of the links for the, for the meshes and all of the models that I'm using. Most of them are free, but I edited them on Blender so I could get the results that I want. Uh, but yeah, so this is the guy responsible for making the hover effect, basically. And then on it, I'm creating this uh, hover. And then we have two different uh, icons that, that you can see here. I'm loading two different textures. And basically, I'm creating a video player hidden in the HTML uh, document. And then I'm using that as a texture for my for my screen. And of course, I had to edit this model on Blender so I could separate the screen from the mesh because it was all one piece. And then I also had to set the the UV mapping correctly so I could get the, the texture proposition right. 
but then like when you press play i am like basically mutating the state to have like either paused or playing and that's how you can control the texture and as you can see here i'm just playing the video that it's a ref from the video that i just created like around here and that's it that's the the main functionality for this video player kind of experience and yeah this is mostly to show you possibilities i know this is not the most practical way that we can watch a video but again i'm trying to think about different ways we can interact with a web page instead of just playing a video from youtube or something like this although it would be easier and possible uh, so yeah, I think that's it for this section and next time we will see about the face hugger and this one will be interesting because like there's a lot of things happening here. I'm using media pipe and uh, TensorFlow and when you click here, you basically have like a, a viewer where we can see our beautiful face hugger. Okay, it's not beautiful at all, I know. Uh, but yeah, and then like you can see all the details, all of the textures. And when you say like, okay, I want to invite my friends to go watching this movie with me, I can face hug myself. And then let's see if it works. I'm using glasses, but yeah, it works. So as you can see here, it is attached to my face now and then I can save a photo and I can of course zoom in, move, talk and then zoom out, define the position that I want and then I say take photo. This will save a screenshot for me and then I can share with my friends. Uh, yeah, it is this. This is the result and yeah doesn't match with my Buddha face on the background, but yeah, I, I learned a lot You like creating this functionality and I hope I will be able to share with you guys in a way that you guys can understand what I did. But yeah, I hope you find this useful. If you like it, please drop a comment below, like subscribe, share with your friends, other developers. And yeah, that's it for this section. Thank you very much. See you.